is on using the wiggler we went over it in class and as I said before you can use it for any of the properties uh, position or uh, scale rotation transparency so to get to it you go window wiggler if you don't already have it open there and it pops up over here in the corner okay so I'm gonna start by making a shape layer so I'm gonna go new shape layer add rectangle add fill okay I'm gonna scale this up so you can see it a little better like that I'm gonna put it on this guideline just so you can see how it's gonna be changing its position I'm gonna hit the letter P set a keyframe go to the end I'm gonna zoom out here so I can see the timeline better okay. I'm gonna go to the end add another keyframe and move it straight over so now we've got the simple animation I'm going to select all the keyframes just by clicking position to get both of them now you see everything light up here in the wiggler now as I said before with the dimensions X is side to side left and right if I did Y it'd be up and down all the same all independently so I'm gonna do all independently just for this demonstration frequency how many times per second I'll leave that at five and then the magnitude is how much of a movement there's going to be so just so you can see for this demonstration I'll do 120 when I click apply watch these keyframes and watch the motion path it adds the keyframes in and you see the motion path gets a lot more chaotic so I'm going to preview the animation and now you can see it's wiggling up and down side to side it's no longer doing that straight motion that's a fast way of adding some visual interest and if you want to constrain it to just side to side you can make a jagged motion but that's in your dimensions and as I said before you can also do the rotation so I'm just hit R for rotation I'm going to click a keyframe there set a keyframe at the end and I'm going to make this 49 degrees. I'm going to select both keyframes by clicking on rotation. I'm going to change the frequency to 3 and the magnitude to 70. Let's watch what happens to the rotation. So now you see it's starting to turn independently to add some interest. And as I said before, you could also do transparency. So I hit the letter T to get opacity. I'm going to click there go to the end click again and I'll make this uh, 50 so it's 50 percent and 100 percent so I'm gonna select all the keyframes by clicking opacity or if you just want to get these two you can click and drag uh, I'm going to do 11 times a second and magnitude of 244 so it should be flashing like flickering see all the keyframes that add see now you can see it's starting to flicker because it's changing the opacity randomly between 100 and 60 percent as we go along and last but not least I want to show you motion path I mean uh, sorry motion blur so you want to make sure you have your column set here with these if you don't see that it's this button down here it says toggle switches and modes you can click that so this is for layer blending we'll go into that layer in the class now I click it again now you see the columns that we want I want motion blur on that layer so we're gonna do click it two ways so I'm gonna add motion blur right here and then to enable it in the composition I need to click on it up here where we normally activate the graph editor just like that so now we'll get some motion blur right there you can see the edge is now softer because it's blurring the fastest motion that it makes the whole thing won't be blurred it's just when it's moving very quickly you'll see the blur right there so that's what sets up the motion blur clicking there and then enabling it in your composition 